I was always interested in the question of the relationship between aesthetics and politics. Making art was really a way for me to work through those kinds of questions. My name is York Chang. I'm a visual artist and we're at the Vincent Price Museum in East Los Angeles. I'm standing in my exhibition, The Signal and the Noise. I sort of put myself through a really rigorous art school curriculum over the years. Putting the work out there and having it received and having the dialogue around it, I think that was all part of the process of me becoming an artist. Yeah, I didn't have a formal art school training. I would have enjoyed uh, art school, I think, but uh, I went to law school instead. I think early on, I really kept separate art and the law. They really came out of different sides of my brain. I really bought into that idea. Later on, when I started to realize it was much more productive for me to think about the relationship between the two worlds. And I think that that's when I started becoming much more interested in my art and exploring questions of epistemology. Also this interplay between subjectivity and objectivity. I think that I started to produce works in a sort of parafictional mode ways in which credibility is staged and the ways that narratives, especially fictional narratives, get projected out into the world. Really through those projects where I, I was really drawn more to a conceptual mode of art making. And to this day, I think I'm constantly trying to reconcile and negotiate these different worlds uh, whenever I'm producing a work. Being an artist isn't really about necessarily a career choice, and it's not about sort of craftsmanship, at least not for me. It's really more about a sort of life activity and a way of thinking through the sort of problems and conditions of my life and that of the community around me. Primarily now, what I'm working with in terms of strategies are appropriation and collage. The exhibition is comprised of seven individual but interlocking artworks that are intended to come together and operate as a whole uh, in an immersive installation. The title of the work is Factographic Fields and the thousands of newspapers are multiples of nine individual newspaper collages that were printed by one of the last remaining newspaper offset printing presses in Los Angeles. Each of the individual newspaper collages is composed of two images that have been selected and cropped from their original context. That sort of formal and conceptual rhyming, I hope, suggests the kind of anonymous algorithmic production of images that drives networks of pictures into our consciousness every day, um, especially on the internet. They also speak to the kind of blurring that happens between the political and the entertainment spheres, which leads to a kind of aestheticization of politics that I think people aren't necessarily conscious of, uh, but it guides so many of their unconscious decisions about uh, politics and the extent to which they intervene or uh, take agency in the political conditions that they're in. And I think newspapers are also interesting in that they're a site in transition, on the brink of obsolescence. It wasn't lost upon me. This is kind of the future of uh, newspapers. I think that when you're looking at images in paper form or some other format in which there is a, a material presence and quality to them, you really have a sense of the weight of the images. And I think that the installation of fact graphic fields, in a way, is a way of thinking about volume and effect and presence of images in our lives and a suggestion about how cluttered our minds are really becoming in these small flat devices in our hands. The graphs on the back wall, the work is a triptych of a set of schematic graphs that display really conclusive, definitive associations between disparate uh, data points. They're sort of absurdist uh, in their rendering of the vastness and complexity of the underlying data that they're attempting to associate. 
the intention is to sort of present graphic uh, representation of the way that people sometimes try to operationalize or instrumentalize these large data sets to some sort of strategic end and the futility of that. There's a desire to have control over that information and I think that narratives as well as models are different ways that people seek to assert control and agency over that information. The title of this work is called Free Fall, and it's a large-scale sculptural representation of a balcony that suggests a state of alternatively perpetual freefall or a state of ruin. After I had read an essay by an artist, Hito Stero, about the condition of groundlessness that we find ourselves in, where the social foundations for political belief systems are highly unstable, and there's a loss of any social consensus about which way is up and which way is down. Shortwave, which involves the installation of a portable shortwave radio, is a radio that's been tuned to a particular frequency where overlapping transmissions from different parts of the country are heard simultaneously. The voices shift in and out between themselves in a constant loop. And then I thought, what if it's neither or either or? It's the problem of getting from here to there. Exactly. When you're here, you want to get to there, but when you get there, you're here, which makes you uh, a nowhere man. The speakers are lost in static and their own thoughts, talking past each other and the kind of noise that that creates instead of true dialogue. And I was really interested in producing an artwork that was about both transmission and reception at the same time, and the idea of a lost nomadic signal. You want to get there, that's back over there. You said that's where I came from. That was... Well, the lesson of all that is that freedom is slavery. There is a work that I produced at the Orange County Museum that's a collaboration with another artist, Daniel R. Small. We've produced a life-size radio booth in the middle of the gallery. In all of these different um, modalities, I think that the radio booth is ultimately about a question of the transmission of ideas and the ways in which radio in particular has played a role in the proliferation of a certain type of magical thinking that bridges gaps in comprehension. The piece Forensics 4 is a large grid of exposed Polaroids that have been reversed so that the only image that's visible are the serial numbers that designate the place and date of manufacture of each of these film pieces. They're really an erased index and in that way I hope to sort of underscore the extent to which we rely upon the power of the image for comprehension and understanding. And so in that way it's also a placeholder for thinking about some other way of producing and consuming images, which in the state that we're in, it's hard to imagine any other way of being. The other piece is to escape the crisis before us, where I've taken a poem that I came across by Adrian Rich, and I've taken that poem and transcribed it in a way that is based upon my observation of the way that my eyes read the poem. And so there are these repetitions of words and phrases that are memorialized in my transcription. The poem oscillates between the look of reportage and that of a poem. And I feel like that work in particular is the truest peace in the whole show and really functions as the signal amongst the noise.
the different elements of the show are really addressing different facets of the problem of our information environment. There's information that is lost and not visible, too vast and complex to be useful. Information that has been aestheticized to the point where politics has essentially become entertainment or a consumer good. A cacophony of sound that's unintelligible and just noise.